Welcome, everyone. I'd like to call to order this Harrison County Board of Education regular meeting. Today is April 16th, 2018. Um, if we could have a moment of silence, and we had a bus accident the other day, and as usual, our first responders are right there when we need them. And we've had incidents at our schools lately, and our police force and our firemen and our safety people are all right there on the minute's notice. So, can we please keep them in our thoughts and prayers? They can hard work for us every day. Thank you all. Mr. Brian Bader, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <laughs> Thank you. Good evening to you all. Again, um, this evening we have several amazing students who recognize board members. And we're going to start with our April Judges Scholar. This month, the Judges Scholar is from South Heights Elementary, Trajan Davis. If you would come forward, please. <laughs> to meet the Judge Executive? Not yet. When do you go? Tomorrow. So tomorrow will be a fantastic day in Henderson County, and the judge will read a proclamation, and he probably will claim tomorrow as your day across the whole county, Henderson County. But for us to learn a little bit about you, we're going to ask Mr. Carroll to come up and tell us a little bit why you chose Trajan, please. All right. And you know, I love all my kids, so it's not easy. But uh, it really was pretty easy this year, uh, because when we think about Trajan, um, you know, South Heights, we, we believe we stand for a lot of things, and that's good character, and, and that's someone that's dependable and loyal and uh, brings everything to the table. You can tell he's a pretty good-looking kid, uh, but he's also really smart, and he's also very athletic, and he's on our academic team. I think the only thing he doesn't do for us is our art, and it probably just doesn't fit into the schedule. But the thing I like most about Trajan is he's kind of a watcher and a listener, and he pays attention to things that maybe some kids don't pay attention to, and I know he's getting it, and I really expect really big things from him, so I thought he'd exemplify us in the biggest and best way. Like an amazing leader in your building, Mr. Carroll. <laughs> people with you. Would you introduce who is with you tonight? My mom, she's right there. And then my dad, my brother, and then my aunt is behind the book. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. We have awarded Trajan with our Medal of Excellence, um, as we do for all students that have outstanding leadership in the Henderson County Schools. So can I have a picture with you? Thank you. sure you'll have a wonderful day tomorrow. Thank you. Next up, we would like to recognize two first place winners at our state STLP competition. And to share with you a little bit about what the state STLP competition is, I'm going to have Mr. Gordon come up first. And as he's making his way up, could I have two students from the state, <coughs> Allison Rideout and Amari Tapp, Hello, 
Um, the STLP competition is a student technology leadership program. <coughs> so across the state of Kentucky, um, students across the state are invited to participate in this program. Then they put projects together. They submit them earlier in the year in regionals or in what we call DPOJ, Digital Project Online Judging. And um, this year, there were about 14,000 students that competed in the state competition across about 40 different categories, representing about 500 different schools and about 100 plus districts. So I'm going to have Ms. Carter talk a little bit about these two fun young ladies. So I'm Ms. Carter, and I'm a third grade teacher at Ben Gate. And this is actually our first year to do STLP at Ben Gate. Um, they used to do it a long time ago, but I started it back this year. So um, this year's goal was just to kind of get the hang of it and see if we knew what we were doing. <laughs> um, so um, we went ahead and waited a little bit and did the online project, and um, we actually um, got 49 out of 50 points for that, which qualified them for state. And then we went ahead and submitted that as well and ended up with first place. So these girls, um, we have seven students in our uh, club and uh, these two ladies actually volunteered to do this. I said, who would like to do it? They both volunteered. They worked extra days um, in order to get it accomplished. So they did a great job. Um, so um, our STLP group, we decided to do a service learning project this year and um, they decided to do chemo buddies here um, in, in town and not only did they collect items but this um, project reflected our, um, our project that we were doing as a club and basically the topic was cancer of course um, we made sure that we included chemo buddies in that project as well we had um, staff members in our building who have gone through chemo we put them in the project too um, and then they had to of course type of well, they did type a three-page paper on how they did the whole process. So that's how they came about. And we're very proud of you ladies and congratulations. Now share with us, you probably brought some support for you. I brought my mom and my sister. My mom and sister are ready to wait for it. Wait for it. There she is. But more, you can check out. See you in Thank you ladies so much. Thank you. Next, we'd like to recognize uh, two students at North Middle School. And you might have possibly read about these students in the newspaper because it was a big deal. Um, our, uh, we had a, a visitor from the state come and award first place and third place for the Secretary of State slogan contest. So could I have Kylie Titzer and Ryan Holly come forward, please? Sure. Yeah. Then I'd also like to ask Mr. Gardner, teacher at North Middle School, please come forward. <laughs> and Ms. Turnus, if you would also come forward, please. So both of these students are um, in Mr. Gardner's social studies class, right? That is correct. And um, Ms. Turnus has had some long history in working with this writing project, so we'd like to recognize her also. But tell me a little... Ryan, tell me a little bit about um, what you did to receive $400. Uh, well, this turn into a substituting that day. And she told me to the contest, and like, I've done that. I can't remember if it was before or after I worked, but it was like, oh, I'm trying to get out of work, so I think you're not so much. <laughs> 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 So I thought that it's to encourage people to vote. So I thought that you shouldn't like people like kind of like to complain about who's in office and stuff. But I don't really think you should like almost be allowed to complain if you don't vote. That's why I think it's very important. Now we know. Thank you. 
congratulations. All right, and Copley was a thousand dollar winner in the same contest. So they are state winners, first place and third place across the state. So tell us a little bit about your project, Kelly. Okay, well, I thought it was really Okay, I know a little bit about politics, so I might as well give it a try. And I thought it was really important to be informed about the candidate you're voting for. <coughs> Absolutely. Um, amazing job. And Mr. Gardner or Ms. Turnus, would you all like to add anything about the contest? Well, my big contribution was I was absent. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Miss Turnus to sub, uh, but we have spent some time talking about democracy and, of course, uh, communism as well in countries that don't have a voice in their government. Uh, so we did emphasize, you know, how important it is here in the United States to uh, get out and take part in elections and uh, things like that. So I was happy when she told me that she was going to do that. Uh, it's something that we've done before. And, my class. I think we had a winner about two or three years ago as well. So uh, I'd like to keep that tradition going and I'm not sure if I get any of this. Sorry, I'm real proud of both of them. Um, this is the fourth time that North Carolina School has been awarded the Best Teacher Award. So we were we were very excited, and we were excited to have Secretary of State Nancy Grimes, and she was extremely complimentary of these students and our whole student body. So I, I'm glad I was there. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a great collaboration between a writing teacher and a social studies teacher, and um, the students benefit. So that's fantastic. Now I think you all have some guests. Ron, tell me who you have with you tonight. I asked my mom. Thank you all for being here. Callie, who do you have? I have my mother, Amy. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. Can we scrunch together and get a picture? students we would like to recognize um, come from our high school and every year we have uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 sometimes up to 25 students who apply for the governor's scholar program and this is a very lengthy process the students have to apply they have to write an essay uh, they have to um, list all of their things that they're involved in whether it's extracurricular activity or or it's a service learning project or it's youth groups outside of the um, of the school day and we are very fortunate in Henderson County to be able to recognize four students and we just received a message uh, Friday of who the four students would be and so I would like to please have come forward Kate Kelsey congratulations Kate Dakota Banks Alexander Chandler and Harrison Jenkins. I'm going to ask each one of you all to share just a little bit of why this is important to you. Why, why did you apply for the Judges Scholar more than your parents told you had to? <laughs> what is it? What is it? Uh, How's it important to you? I'm gonna let Kate start. So uh, for me, I heard a whole bunch of people talking about it and how life-changing it was in their academic life and how they uh, they went to this camp and then it gave them a huge perspective change on what they wanted to do with their life. So I did it for kind of the same reason except some of my friends were like, hey, you should do this. It was really fun. We had a good time. Also, it helped with college. So I was like, all right, might as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I like I saw all these people talking about how great GSP was. So I decided, hey, I want to do that, and it happened. And also, it helps the college. Well, I don't know if I can be as articulate as my friend here, but <laughs> like I said, it's really good on college applications. So of course, that's nice. And I always hear um of other of our upperclassmen friends that always said like the friends that they meet there, they're always meeting with them, like on reunions and stuff, and they still like communicate with them every day. I don't know, it seemed like a really nice life changing experience. Each one of you received the, the Medal of Excellence. And I will share with you, this is one year that I had the opportunity to read through all of the different applications. We submitted 21, I believe, 21 or 22 this year, and we had four winners from Henderson County High School. Some school districts submit that many. They don't even have, have a person that they acknowledge as a winner. So these students not only have strong academics, but they carry a very strong character with them. They're being a little modest. They're very involved in their school, involved in their church. Um, things outside of the community are all on their resume and throughout their application. And they all had to spend time writing an essay to be able to be a part of the Judges Scholar. So we want to say congratulations to you all. Wear that Medal of Excellence and Pride. We really are uh, proud that you are part of our leadership team in, at Peters County High School. Now, you also have to introduce who came with you. Yeah, all right, Kate, who's with you tonight? I have my mother, my grandmommy, and my father. Wonderful, would you all stand, please, and be recognized. Judges Scholar's a big thing, and stay standing. Stay standing, keep going. All right, so I got my dad over there. Yes, my please mom, stand. My grandfather, my sister, and I uh, also want to give a shout out to my sixth grade homework teacher, Steve Garner. Homer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got my dad, we got my mom, uh -huh. and a huge shout out to Steve Gardner, <laughs> my third <laughs> sixth grade teacher. <laughs> I've also got my mom and my dad, except this time I've got my sixth grade homeroom teacher, Mr. Gardner, <laughs> over there, my hero. <laughs> Mr. Gardner, you might as well stay with me. I love you, Thank you for all you do in supporting your child's education. Thank you all very much. Let's get a picture. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Thank you all. Y'all are more than welcome to stay, but if you need to leave us this evening because you have other obligations, we totally understand. But these students that were recognized this evening, that's the reason why we all do what we do, and that's the reason our teachers do what they do. So thank you all very much. Moving on to um, public participation and recognition of guests. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board this evening? Also have some student ambassadors. If you all would stand up, um, Michaela Watkins, um, Alexi O'Dell, Reed Mattingly, and John Logan. Thank you all for joining. Moving on to um, approving the minutes from the prior meeting because everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the March 19th regular meeting. Are there any changes or additions? Thank you, Mr. Mike. You're going to be faster tonight, right? <laughs> Thank you. Tracy seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Those of y'all out there don't know what's going on. It's an argument. I'm quite to say the 
but he motioned to get us to adjourn, and Mike's usually fastest, and she keeps trying to speed up, but it's not flying, so. Okay, moving on to reports. Um, first one is capital projects. Um, John Hagen. Approved purchase power agreement for Spotsville Elementary. Okay, so uh, this is the agreement between the district and Kennedy to provide electrical service to the new Spotsville Elementary School. Uh, you're probably familiar with. They do require upfront payment, come set the pole, drop drop the wire to the gear to provide the permanent power. So this, so this is to get our pole up and purchase that. I mean, and electricity up to our new building because we already have power in Spotsville. Correct. To, to the new this is, Will we cancel the other one when the other school's taken down? That's right. Okay, cool. Um, look for a motion to approve the agreement between the um, Henderson County Board of Education and Energy. Because they need it now and there's not lights up here yet. Oh, yeah. it's time to Yes. So is that your motion? That is. That's motion to All right. And I'm just going to second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried, turn on the light. Also, approve a change order for change order BG 15 016. These are, this is four separate change orders, two of which go together 22 um, 8 1 to Dixie Light is a credit of $67,890, and 26 3 to State Electric is a credit of $3,834. This is a proposed request that came, this is PR number one, uh, but because of the electrical contractor situation, we had to wait until we got State Electric involved to get their portion of this, this credit. This is to delete from the scope motorized shades in, in the building, except for one of the gym that we were making. Uh, one of the things we were tasked with was trying to find some value engineering, value engineering items, and this was one of the ones that came up early on in the project. We just haven't had a chance to bring it to you. Uh, Did, does anyone have any questions about that? I got one question about John Hagen. But it says the Hanover is only paying the board the 243-577 reflected. 27-4. Um, yes, there's a 275, so there's a difference of 31,981, but yet that's a credit. That was so a. Explain that to me. Right. Change word 27-1, which we printed last month, had a misprint in it. Dollar figures were correct, which is a misprint on the actual change order. This is correct, correcting that mistake. So it is a credit um, back to the contract. That makes any sense. Um, Hanover, the, the original change were reflected an incorrect amount that Hanover was paying, reimbursing for this is fixing that mistake. Okay. And then the last one is 26 4. This is a, a, an ad to change to the owner preferred fire alarm panel, which matches the other schools in the district when the job is bid. ADE does not allow you to single source spec materials, so we had to bid it with an open spec. This allows you to have the same power alarm panel uh, as you have in other schools. Any questions on any of those? <coughs> so these all, we need one motion to recommend, to recommend all of them, is that correct? We do one for all of them? Probably wouldn't hurt them individually. Okay, so we need a motion to um, approve change order uh, BG15-016-22-8-1 I hear motion to that effect. Thank you. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Approve BG15-016 order 26-3. I hear motion to that effect. Thank you, Ms. Tracy. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carry. Um, motion to approve BG15-016, BG order 26-4. Your motion to that effect, please. Got Thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Motion for BG 15 016, order 27 4. Okay, there a second? I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. There's all of your change orders. I just want to give you a real quick. Okay. Uh, I've been under contingency. Even though we've had the unsuitable soils, the oil scene, and whatnot, you actually have a greater contingency now than you did when you started the project. You started with $766,762, and with the approval of those, it gets you up to eight hundred four thirty six sixty five. dollars 65 So you actually have a totally intact contingency plus some. That's yeah, good. I mean, keep building will keep saving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On a project of this size, that's, I mean, that's remarkable, simply, so that's good. Uh, just to give you a real quick update for, uh, on the status of everything, we had a pretty good month, um, all things considered. Last week especially, but it's the first full week we've gotten in without losing bad weather in quite some time. Um, today didn't work out very well, but the rest of this week looks pretty favorable. Production's getting better. We're averaging over 50 men a day on the site, and that's going to increase this week. We're getting our third masonry contractor to the job site probably Wednesday of this week. So when those guys get here, we'll probably have roughly 30 men working on the masonry work along. So that's really going to help things. Windows are going in just as quick as the brick can get laid. Uh, they're fabricating in Owensboro. I'm just waiting on Randall to make a phone call with, with the red put in. So uh, those are on standby. Roofer had a pretty good week last week. Putting the decking on the building took quite a bit longer than we anticipated. Um, but hopefully, the, they have roughly 40% of the two story classroom wing in the drive now. So hopefully, by the end of next week, we'll have the remainder in the drive with the shingle start. So that's the plan there. Mechanical electrical is in really good shape. It's further along than it should be at this stage, to be honest. Uh, we hope to get the final plumbing roughing inspection this week should have the sprinkler system roughing completed this week the entire building. The painter is working everywhere he's available, primarily the gym and the cafeteria right now. Uh, the kitchen equipment supplier will be on site Tuesday next week to install the freezer and cooler. So once that goes in, the ceramic tile work will begin. So uh, that's, that's the goal right now is to get our finished work started. We had our uh, progress meeting this morning, and the two major takeaways from that were continuing to finish work. Uh, we need to get some temporary enclosures built, some temporary ventilation, and some humidity control in the building. Drying out the block so the painter can paint, drying out the floor so the floor coverings can get going. That's, that's a big goal now, so that's going to start tomorrow, actually. Uh, and the other thing, obviously, is the site work. Between now and the 30th, you'll be seeing all those trailers out front disappear, with the exception of ours, probably we'll relocate it. But uh, we've got to get out of the way so his eggs can start their site grading. So, in front of the building. The front parking lot has to be in place between now and this summer. And as much of the rear parking lot has to be in place between now and August. So, that when we switch from the existing building to the new building takes place, there's parent pickup, bus salute, all that is accounted for. So, we're continuing to move forward, but we are preparing to start school in the existing building got to be prepared for that in all cases. Uh, so we had a meeting following our regular meeting with those players today. And everyone understands that life is much easier to get you in this building as soon as you can. The degree of difficulty to complete the work is much greater uh, once you're drawn in there box. So uh, continue to move forward, but we are taking steps to be prepared and again it's not finished in office. That's all I want to come What's the update on the geothermal? They have, four, at, including today, we're going to get 42, so about 42 wells completed. So that leaves eight more to go in this front parking lot. So a couple more days, three more days, it should be out of the way. And then kind of loop it. It's, it's, they were shut down from Tuesday of last week. The rig broke down, but they're back drilling today. So they've actually done a pretty good job. Um, moving on to the um, BG4s and BG5s for the um, Archery Building parking lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Cindy, Mr. George? Yeah, we're going to be four and five. Any questions for members? Make a motion to accept BGs as presented. BG four and BG five for the Just ma'am. Okay. I'll second that motion. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Archery building complete. Thank you. Moving on to technology, Mr. Bryan. Madam Chair and members of the board, thank you for having me uh, tonight to provide you with an update for technology in Henderson County Schools. Uh, we've been blessed in Henderson County Schools to have strong support in the uh, implementation of technology, both uh, instructionally and from the technical side. Um, just a brief, uh, two things you'll have in front of you tonight. Um, you'll have an update that I'm going to pre present to you. You'll also have the 2018-2019 Educational Technology Plan to approve, and that will go to the State Department for next school year. A quick rundown about our department. Um, we support 13 schools in three other locations. Um, some numbers that have really skyrocketed in the last couple of years are 40, 647 Chromebooks, 3,663 Windows devices, those are laptops, desktops, etc. 1,023 iPads, and we do that with 10 technical support staff, two instructional technology staff, and uh, we have some school technology assistants who attend our computer labs in our elementary schools. So. <laughs> we do have a great team uh, supporting that equipment, and, and you know, as we get along in this presentation, we'll talk about things that are moving forward at such a rapid pace now with the implementation of technology and all the devices that require technology to operate. The world of IT now has its hands in all of our phone systems, our HVAC systems, our security systems, access control. We call it the Internet of Things for a reason. Everything wants to connect to the Internet. So, second slide there. This is a roadmap that you're all familiar with. and. Mr. Gordon and myself worked collaboratively to put this together and present this to you several years ago. And this is the roadmap that we've really been following uh, for our one-to-one -one implementation. Uh, some good news on that front is that we are ahead of schedule. Uh, next year, we were scheduled to have grades uh, 5 through 12, fully one-to-one, -one, but we're going to be able to include fourth grade next year. So allowing us to pull, because of some of the early pilot programs we had at the high school, we're going to be able to pull those devices out. The devices for the high school have been ordered, so we'll have those to get ready to roll out for next school year, uh, this summer. And we will be able to put devices in the hands of our fourth grade students as well. So next year we will be 4 to 12, 1 to 1. Extremely proud of that. Uh, a lot of folks behind the scenes working hard to get that, that job done. Um, once again, kudos to the support of the board, our superintendent. We've had a lot of work happen in the last year and a half to increase our capabilities to support that one-to-one -one program. Um, we finished a project. If you want to head to the next slide there, Ms. Robert. <clears throat> we upgraded our entire network infrastructure. And that was a massive, massive project. Uh, 460 wireless access points, 182 network switches, two routers. Um, I know those just seem like numbers, but that there's a lot of work that goes into that. That was all done after the school year had started, so that was evening work, uh, after hours, weekend work, etc. So I can't uh, commend our team enough on, on what they did to accomplish that. A lot of it's in the ceiling and a lot of it in the, the data closet. So <clears throat> can be some nasty environments to work in. One of the things that I'm really proud of, um, and Mr. Gordon has led a tremendous effort in our, our Google Cloud migration. And I call it the death of the U drive. <laughs> <laughs> and I've caught some flack over that, but 
it, it, it's we're, it's really getting us in the right direction. Um, it not only saves the district money by t utilizing free resources offered by Google for education, but it, it also helps us move into a direction where we're introducing our students to a world where they can work collaboratively using the resources that are not only available tomorrow, but are emerging constantly. Uh, Google is on the forefront of that ever-evolving technology. They're introducing new services every day, and it's amazing what our students have the capability to, to look at today as far as their experiences are concerned. <clears throat> Next slide there, our initiatives continued. Uh, like I said earlier, IT really touches every scope and aspect of what we do from a from a backside perspective. Uh, 160 security cameras have since been deployed in the last two years. Our access control and our secure entrances have grown and continue to grow. Mr. Steiner and I are working closely together with a group now to look at expanding access control at the high school level. Safe alerts is something we put in a while back with a product called Go Guardian. And what that does is it allows us to monitor the usage on the Chromebooks. Uh, we can set up predetermined actions based on certain things that are certain triggers. So if a student is using their Chromebook, say at home or even at school, and they search the word suicide, or they search the word bomb, or they search the word gun, then that's going to trigger a smart alert. And there are going to be alerts that are sent to the building principals, the guidance counselors at those, principals, at those locations and also district leadership, so we can review and react on that. So I think that's a really good thing that we put in place. <clears throat> We're working with a third party company to monitor social media. Uh, right now that's limited to Twitter. So if we have certain uh, triggers in Twitter that are geographically related to us, we get a report on that pretty much daily. Uh, so we can investigate that if there's a threat there. The digital parenting videos. We did a, a series of three videos recently. Put those on our YouTube channel. Also circulated that uh, throughout social media. I think the last time we counted, Miss Megan told us we had over 3,000 views on those, something like that. So uh, we, we felt like it was important, especially you know the tragic events surrounding what took place in our state and other states. So much of the communication that happens prior to those events and during those events and after those events happened through the devices and on social media. So I felt like it was important to just give some tools to our, our parents and our students on how, the, how they can properly use technology and use it in a responsible manner. And uh, I think we did a really good job of doing that. So strengths. Our wide area network uh, is consisted of a partnership that we have with Henderson Municipal Power and Light. We're in year four of a five-year agreement with them that will be up uh, here in the next year that has a, a, an opportunity to be renewed for another five years if it's mutually acceptable by our, both, both parties. We really appreciate that partnership. Very low rates for our fiber optic networks. The E-rate program has really allowed us to take advantage of the federal funds to do the infrastructure upgrades that I mentioned earlier. So right now we are getting reimbursed 90% of the money that we pay to Hemble and there's some municipal power and light for our fiber optic networks. And right now uh, we are currently receiving 85% reimbursement on any uh, investment that we make in our networking infrastructure. So it's just a no-brainer to take advantage of those programs. Like I said earlier, your support uh, and investments in our infrastructure has been great. Of course, our, we could not do anything without our dedicated faculty and staff. Mr. Gordon's led a tremendous effort in professional development opportunities for our, our teachers. Uh, we've attended several technical conferences, such as KISD. Uh, we have a huge event here in the state of Kentucky at the end of this month called the Kentucky Go Digital event. That's uh, second year for that event. It's really growing and the Hoosier Education Computers Consortium Tech Conference is a really good conference. It's close, it's local, it's uh, relatively inexpensive and we get a lot of bang for our buck for our teachers there. <clears throat> 76 plus now 
I think is the number on our G Suite certified teachers and staff, not only teachers. So this has kind of been a snowballing effect. We've had uh, teachers just get busy at getting those certifications. Uh, Mr. Gordon's been leading the way on that. Super proud of everything they've done there. One of the things that you all invested in when we started the one-to-one -one initiative that has paid huge dividends is the dedicated digital learning coach. That's a, that shared position that we put at both South Middle School and North Middle School. Currently that's filled by Ms. Stacy Fish. Has been paid huge dividends for those teachers. I can't say enough about how good of a job that she's done. And uh, our teachers are always commenting on that support and how it's needed. So our high speed internet connection, we the state pays for that for us. We're currently at one gigabyte, one gig connection. That's uh, that's that's that meets our needs right now, and of course our students. A couple of things I wanted to share with you here is, Miss Robin, if you could click that one-to-one -one pictures link there. Hopefully, it'll open up for you. So you, you just want to open the person there. This is uh, some pictures, and I'm not sure if you all had the opportunity to see these in action. If you open that one up, this was from the rollout at the middle schools, the beginning of the school year, uh, when they were getting their devices. I thought this was very interesting. They were really excited. Uh, just scroll on through them. We chose to go with the Lenovo Chromebooks. Uh, we have technicians and students getting their Lenovo certifications to help support those devices. Those are just a few of the 4,000 we currently have in our school system right now. must really be on the ball if there was 15,000 applicants for the technology award and we have two state winners. Absolutely. Yeah. That's another thing I wish I would have included in my presentation. The, the participation in the student technology leadership over the last few years has really grown in our district and that's another thing to be very proud of. The Google Expeditions, real quick, uh, this link is to Mr. Gordon's Twitter account. This is a an opportunity our students get with a, a kit that we purchased as a district to uh, allow them to learn in a virtual environment. I'm not sure if you have the sound on or not, but you can turn the sound on, it'd be great. If you hover over the picture itself, or over the video, yeah, hit the speaker. <laughs> Basically, that's just another one of the tools in the toolboxes we've given our students to visit places in the world that they would never otherwise get the opportunity to visit. So, just really cool things happening in technology in Henderson County Schools, and I will be glad to answer any questions any of you may have. They're not just visiting here in this world. I saw them visiting Mars when I was in the high school science room. They were what the Mars rover had shown, and I thought, we as adults now only got to see what Mars looked like or we thought it looked like in our science books. That was someone's made up version. And now our students are using technology to actually see what Mars looks like. It's just wild. Very good point. Thank you. I think one of the things that I would like to mention is when we're in and out.
out of schools, the middle schools, um, that the kids, uh, you know, they take their Chromebooks everywhere they go. It, it's almost like they're an attachment. It's a textbook for every content that they need. And uh, Ms. Johnson and Mr. Rush just make it their way of life now. And we're very excited to move that into the high school. Mr. Gordon, if you would stand also. You're you're very a uh, critical part in making all of this happen, and we appreciate your leadership and Mr. Bailey's leadership in leading that department. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. We do have another technology member here, Mr. Stephen Johnson. He's another one that joins us pretty much regularly at every single board meeting, so he's my IT man. Him too. He's my personal IT man. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> you don't have any other questions. Thank you. No, I will share with you. Um, I attended a um, session at. NSBA, the National School Board Convention, just two weeks ago, um, and one of them was one-to-one -one technology, what's next? And this was a, a school system in Utah. Um, they have a total enrollment of approximately 6,800 students, so almost the exact same size as Henderson County, and they are taking what Brian and, and Chris and Stephen have done and are moving it into the next, uh, the next generation. The key thing that they have um, initiated is they're taking their what we would call a um, curriculum specialist and it's now blended into a curriculum technology specialist. So the two go hand in hand so that the person in the, each building um, knows how to do the curriculum but also knows how to blend it into technology and take it that next generation. So almost every one of their used to be curriculum specialists are now curriculum slash technology specialists. And I agree, and as we move forward, we are looking at areas that where we can not only just add headcount, but how we can transform roles in Henderson County. As the world changes, we need to adapt and change as well. So we're meeting those needs of our students, so. All right, any other questions or comments, board members? Thank you, Brian, appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to approve their the plan. Into a motion to approve the um, EdTech plan for 2018-2019. Thank you, and I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Robin. Um, health coordination, Ms. Nancy? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, we have also in your packet the current report uh, school health. Uh, this is um, all of of the, the work that our school, school nurses do and our school clinics. Um, currently, uh, we have a nurse in every one of our facilities, and in some cases, a nurse assistant. And uh, except for we have a um, medication administration at Simple, but we do not have an on site uh, RN or uh, LPN. Uh, I think the data pretty well speaks for itself. Is uh, updated from last year. Is, is very similar to similar, excuse me, similar to last year. As far as attendance, our, our clinics play play an integral role in keeping our attendance data um, acceptable. Thank you. Any questions, board members? While some of those numbers are shocking that the conditions that our students have, it is nice to know that we have some medical personnel, people, and medication to help take care of. Thank you very much. Moving on to old business. Um, we have a second reading of policy 09.436, search and seizure. Mr. Steve. So, ma'am, that's just, uh, as a reminder, it's just an update. Uh, we work with Ms. Beth on uh, Beth Bird and also uh, KSB DEA to update our search and seizure policy. Any questions or changes to that? Hearing none, I'll look for a motion to approve the second reading of policy point 09.436 search and seizure. I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mike. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to new business, uh, legislative update. This ought to be fun. Ms. Margana? Well, it will be brief. <laughs> <laughs> it 
it's um, we received uh, information today. You now we received information daily from KSBA. You all probably get those emails from Tom Shelton, our KASS person, a lot of times from Wayne Young. And today the message was primarily they just finished session on Saturday and asked that we be a little bit patient as they read through and give us guidance as to not just what the words say in black and white, but what the meaning is behind all of those words. And then on Saturday, there was a House Bill 265 that was passed, and they feel like that there are some tweaks that will affect the budget bill out of that House Bill that was passed. Um, I can share with you that on Friday, we did send a delegation of 26 folks um, throughout the Henderson County Schools, and um, those, all of those folks used their own money for travel, for gas, for food that day. Henderson County Schools did not provide their transportation. And um, principals were amazing to find coverage um, in their schools. So we didn't use general fund money to provide a substitute for anybody that was missing. And I'm sure they did that by using maybe their guidance counselor would help cover a class um, or you know something like that. So I wanted to make sure that the board was aware um, that we did not use any money to send that delegation. And um, things that we've heard, these are heard, so they're all like in quotes, that um, we will not receive professional development money, textbook money, transportation, which will be funded as it was the prior year. And then just today, heard, again, it's not in writing yet, that even Henderson County will receive some of the Cold Severance uh, money, but I don't, I don't know what that amount would be at this point. We will, we will. So, sure. So really the update will probably be better in the next few days as um, those specific things start to unfold. And they really cautioned us to be careful that what it says in black and white and what the meaning is and compare that with the house bill on Saturday. So I'll definitely send you all something to by the end of the week. I also heard at KSBA some of the technology, some of the schools across the country, other states like us, short on funds, are using their technology to do their professional development. Instead of sending people away, they're doing it either via um, a, a webinar or um, a one-to-one -one thing, bringing people in, but they're using that technology because they don't have the more money that we do for PD. So, um, a new way to do it. Ms. Morgana. Moving on to, um, we need to schedule Superintendent's Capstone Project. And last year, we looked up to see how we did this last year, and we decided that we would meet at 5 o'clock in the May meeting, so that would be May 21st. I would request that we meet at 5 o'clock from 5 to 5.45 for the Capstone Project regular board meeting at 6, if that works for the board. We get a chance to check the calendar. Is that May 21st at 5 o'clock work for everyone? Yes? You okay? I'm sorry? Is it? May the 21st. May the 21st. My name is 21st at 5 a.m. 5 p.m. 5 a.m. 5 p.m. You're going to be out of town. Do we want to set this for a minute? Mr. Wall will not be in this one. This one here. I can live without you at the board meeting, but I don't want to live without you at the capstone. Project. Oh, you can't live without me at all. Well, I will be okay, we won't go there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Monday the 14th. What time do we want to do that? Do we want to do it at 5 o'clock? Yes. Can we do that at 5 o'clock? Can we do 5.30? 5.30, would that help? 
So 5.30 on the 14th. Oh. Here, let me start raising my hands here. You can't do it on the 14th? What about the 15th? That's his. Okay. Okay, you pick a day. You and Mike sit over there, get your hands together, and pick a day. Oh, I just said I came here the 21st because Sally was and now I got it from that end over here. Uh, if you want to go ahead and keep it on the 21st, I'm fine. I can, yes. I can catch up. I'm we can. I really can't. Yeah, because we're not doing the uh, superintendent's evaluation until we June. the capstone presentation that would give you all the documentation and forms and then you guys usually spend two weeks and get it and to you and okay. then public on the June meeting. Yes. Okay, so we can get the information to Mr. Mike here. Okay. David, can you video this happens on the front? Oh, you don't have to do that. No. <laughs> I can give you all the handouts you want. <laughs> I can give you all the handouts you want. No superintendent video for that. Okay, so we're back to the 21st at 5 o'clock. And Mr. Waller will get his information manually. Okay, so moving on to, I'll see, can we do, why is there an action requirement? I don't think we, do we, do we need to set that as a special board meeting? Okay, so I need a motion to set a special board meeting for May the 21st at 5 p.m. Thank you, and I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Are you opposed? Motion carried. Ms. Beth, is that done in, um, Closed session because it's not part of the superintendent's okay. Okay, so that will be part of the open meeting if you want the boards to attend. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, which has um, bid recommendations, student fees for 2018-2019, shortened day for one special ed student, student overnight trip request, school activity fundraiser request, um, auditor's contract, grant applications. Retiree resolutions and use of school buses. Any of those items you've been formed or discussed? Hearing none, I'll look for a motion to approve. The, oh, I'm sorry. Just a question. I remember we had a couple of requests for student fees throughout the year. Is this going to be comprehensive, the 28 2019, 2018 19 school year? I, I just want I asked the principals to submit any fees for the 2018-2019. Right. And this is the list that they submitted. Okay. So we just need to be really careful. I, I hate it when parents see the fees up front, they prepare for them, they pay for them, and through the years, through the year, if other things come up, you know, we need to stick to our policy on that one. Just ask you to stick to the fee schedules listed on this. Is that correct? What? I take that, that back. It was fundraisers. Yeah. Fundraisers. Yes. Okay. Um, so I look for a motion to approve the consent agenda as listed. Make a motion, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are you second? Thank you, Dr. Sutton. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to financial, the treasurer's report, Ms. Cindy. The treasurer's report for the month ending in March I included total receipts of $4,120,983 <clears throat> and total expenses of $5,230,378 for net decrease in all funds of $1,109,395. Any questions on the Madam Chair, members of the board, I respectfully request your approval of the treasurer's report as submitted this evening by Cindy Cloutier. Look for a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Right here, second. 
Thank you, Dr. Sutt. All in favor say aye. Aye. You opposed? Motion carried. Treasurer's report approved. Moving on to paid warrants, Ms. Cindy. We have a paid warrant report covering the period of March 20th through April the 16th. It includes total paid warrants of $2,895,427.66. Any questions on any of the paid warrants? Madam Chair, member of the board, I respectfully request your approval of the paid warrant report as submitted this evening by Cindy Cloutier. A motion to approve the paid warrant report pays the bills. Moved. Thank you, Mr. Mike. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Pay the bills, Ms. Cindy. Um, also be noted that we have received information for personnel actions and we're going to thank most of you all for coming because we're going into executive session. If you need to go into executive session pursuant to KRS 61.8101B for deliberations for future acquisitions of sale or real property. So you make that motion and I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. 